Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day and today guys we're going to be going over my stealth archer build for Remnant 2. So if you're looking to unleash your inner archer or maybe just wipe your ass with apocalypse difficulty then this is the build for you. So this build is going to be utilizing the invader and hunter class. I did just recently do an invader and hunter class but I, uh, I'm doing one again, okay? I'm doing one again, but a little bit different. And if you couldn't tell, our main weapon is, of course, going to be the bow. So what makes this build so good and enjoyable to you? Well, first things first, you're going to be able to one-shot any mob or elite that you come in contact with inside of Remnant, making this build very enjoyable to actually do exploring with, like just going through the game and trying to collect a lot of the rings and amulets you might be missing. On top of that one-shot capability, the bow has fantastic DPS. Obviously, but you didn't see that one coming. So we're able to get a total of about 12k damage on weak spots, which is really good and it could actually be stronger. And I'll get into that when we get into our gear. We actually have pretty decent survivability with this build. There's going to be two setups I am going to show you. One is actually going to be really good for surviving, but the other one's going to be more damage focused. But either way, whichever one you choose, they are both very good for survivability. We have really good reload speed and draw speed with the bow. And we also have some pretty good speed in general, courtesy of the haste buff. Now for some negatives, and there's only really maybe one or two. Now the first negative is... If you cannot aim to save your life, this build is not for you. The bow is just a quicker version of the snipe. You can use it at long range. It works really well when you're at distance, obviously. You just pick all the enemies off at range. But like I said, if you cannot aim, uh, yeah, you're going to actually not like the bow at all. And you're probably not going to like this build at all as well. And then the second negative is more of an everybody issue. Not just if your aim's really dog shit. If the enemies or bosses do not have weak spots, the damage with the bow falls off a fucking cliff, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so as long as the bosses and the enemies have weak spots, you're doing amazing damage. If the bosses and the enemies do not have weak spots, eh, you're not doing as good damage and the enemies take a little bit longer to kill. That is kind of annoying it's the only negative to the bow but you can kind of work around this by using the crescent moon bow or maybe even using the boar mod to then get weak spots to hit with the bow but other than that this build absolutely slaps and i've been really enjoying the bow inside remnant too all right now for the gear and the traits guys the the meat and the potatoes of the video so of course we're using invader and hunter the invader skill we are using is wormhole i think wormhole is really good for single shot weapons i think it's just made for single shot weapons and again it worked really well with the bow the way i like using it is when an enemy is about to attack you you kind of use the wormhole as a dodge uh, make sure all your buffs are ready to go every like you've got everything set up use the wormhole and then your next hit with the bow if you hit a weak spot this is how you're able to do those massive 10 11 12k uh, crits as long as everything lines up for you with your buffs it's also really good to gain distance away from enemies and then you can just peg them off one by one at range with the bow and the bow still hits very hard at range the next skill of course i'm taking is hunter's shroud now hunter's shroud is going to be really good just for a little bit of survivability it's going to make the enemies less aware of us and make us harder to hit but on top of that the main reason we're using this is because it synergizes really well with the bow going in and out of uh hunter's shroud while we're attacking with the bow because of by the time we're charging up the bow, Hunter Shroud usually comes back on. And then we're able to get ambush almost all the time, which is going to increase our range damage by 50%. Insanely strong with the bow that already hits really hard. Now again, as always, for the for the actual armor we're wearing, you can put on whatever you want, whatever uh, strong back uh, allows you to. But for what I'm wearing, I've got the Technician Helmet, I've got the Fey Royal Body Plate, the Fey Royal Greaves, and also the Leto Mark II Gloves. I've kind of just gone with this because it kind of fits the look of the stealth archer kind of build I'm going for, I suppose. I am using the shielded heart. Feel free to use whatever you want. There's no real uh, definitive heart for this build. Rune heart works really well. Resonating heart works really well. I just like shielded because, you know, shielded is one of the strongest hearts in the game. Uh, for the upgrades I have put on my heart, I have got increased range crit chance, increased range crit damage, and also weak spot damage. And I just died to bleed, lol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually, I didn't know that could happen. I thought you would just go to gray health. Anyway, excuse me, mate. Can you, I'm trying to do a video here. Can you not die? As I was saying, the upgrades I am taking on the heart are 
range crit chance, range crit damage, and weak spot damage. You could switch weak spot damage out for skill cooldown, more defensive stuff, more damage uh, reduction, maybe more armor. It's really up to you. I've just put the weak spot damage there because I'm a damage whore and I want to see big numbers pop up on my screen. Now, moving on over to the weapons, guys. Now, the first weapon I want to talk about is the Sag Bow or the Sagittarius Bow. This is going to be probably one of the best bows uh, to use in terms of the raw damage it can give, uh, it can output because it has a really, really good weak spot damage multiplier and it has got a good round per second on the actual bow itself. So any increases to draw speed, reload speed is going to make this bow a hell of a weapon. And that's kind of what we've done. When you put sequence shot, the mutator on, all you have to do is do one charge shot and then the next uh, charge shot that you use will pretty much already be ready. You don't even have to charge it up. You just keep clicking. You just keep clicking mouse one and you just keep charge shooting. It's really satisfying. Now, why sequence shot is active, charge primary shots will gain 1% increased critical strike chance. Now, because of sequence shot, basically making the sag have instant charge time on its attacks, it is very easy to get this 20% increased range critical strike chance. Sequence shot is an absolute must for just about any bow you want to use. And then the other bow I do want to talk about, of course, and I think everyone knows what this bow is, and that is the Crescent Moon Bow, probably arguably one of the strongest bows in the game. This build isn't really set up for the Crescent Moon, but it, you can slot it in very easily. And the main reason you're going to slot this in is going back to what I was talking about before when the bow is usually trash when enemies don't have weak spot. The Crescent Moon with its mod does make up for that. And when you're using Sequence Shot, your charge attacks are also going to be instant and when you charge attack with when you have your mod out you're going to be shooting two arrows at a time so it is going to make up that dps loss when our enemies do not have weak spots so keep that in mind if you're struggling with a boss it's beating your ass because he doesn't have a weak spot and you're using the sag go ahead switch to the crescent moon and you're going to have a much better time. Moving on to the melee weapon, it's completely up to personal preference. I've just put in the Spectral Blade here just so I can have more uh, close range AoE because we are using a bow and that's mainly a long range weapon. The melee weapon is just open up to personal preference. Put in whatever you feel comfortable with using. And last but not least for the handgun, we are using the double barrel. Now the reason I'm using double barrel, again, because the bow is a long range weapon i'm trying to get some close range stuff so if as if you're getting swarmed by mobs you're just not going to get overwhelmed you can switch a double barrel just blow them into the the bloody shadow realm and for the mod that i have got on the double barrel it is overflow overflow is going to be good just give us more fire rate and more reload speed good for a shotgun because we only got two bullets in the mag so we burn through those pretty quickly but we are using bandit to try and maybe not burn through bullets uh, so quickly and bandit does come in clutch more times than none. It is super satisfying uh, when you get this thing to work. And basically what Bandit does is it grants a 30% chance to return spent ammo directly into the magazine of this weapon. Since we only have two rounds in the mag, this is very helpful, the fact that we can shoot an enemy and we instantly get that round back into the magazine. And this can get crazy. Like you can shoot an enemy like five, six, seven times and you're not even needing to reload with a two round shotgun because of bandit very very strong especially for shotguns inside of remnant 2. now moving on over to the amulet and the rings guys now the first amulet we do have the neck bone necklace now this is going to give us a 25 percent increased damage when suffering from a status or a blight effect and also it's going to reduce damage of status effects by 50 percent so some nice survivability there and a very nice damage bonus now the way we're going to be getting uh, this damage bonus is of course from atonement fold. I feel like this ring has to be meta. I see a lot of people use this ring in their builds and there's a good reason why it's pretty strong. So atonement fold is going to inflict us with bleed which then gives us the damage bonus from neck bone uh, necklace but it also gives us 10% critical strike chance which is really good. So these two, uh, these two items really synergize quite well together. Another item that synergizes really well with the Atonement Fold is the Painless Obsidian. So if you guys did not know, the Atonement Fold bleed actually takes away your red health and leaves behind gray health. And because we're always inflicted with that bleed, we're always gonna have the gray health, which means we're always gonna have this haste buff, which is very nice because it's gonna make our bow uh, quicker, the draw and the reload speed. It's gonna make our movement speed quicker. It's just We're just gonna be quicker overall and that is really good inside of remnant and the last two rings are absolutely no-brainer rings you probably see them in a lot of uh just range damage build that is the probability cord and also the zanias malice 
probability core, 30% increase to critical strike damage, and the Zanius Malice in total is going to give us a 30% increase to weak spots as long as we're hitting weak spots. These rings are very strong and absolutely must for just about any range build you want to do inside of Remnant 2, especially if you're going through Apocalypse. Now, if you do want to go ahead and make this build a hell of a lot more defensive, maybe you're not someone that likes to self-bleed being infected on yourself, then you can go ahead and put on the Energy Diverter Amulet, which is the one that when you have a shield, you're going to get 15% increased damage and 10% critical strike chance. Then you can take off the Atonement Fold Ring for the Tightly Wound Coil and go ahead and remove the Painless Obsidian Ring for the Archer's Crest. Now, this way, you're still going to have Instant Charge with Sequence Shot, and now because because the bow only has one round in the magazine, you're always going to be getting uh, the shield from tightly wound coil. So you're always going to have a shield, you're always going to be getting that damage bonus, and you're just going to have that little bit more survivability. And of course, the shielded heart is definitely going to work a lot better uh, if you do go that route. And another thing to note as well, I do not have the corrupted rune pistol, but if you do want to get even more damage, out of this build, I would highly recommend using the Corrupted Rune Pistol. So again, another really good option. I just don't have it mainly because I'm trying to save my uh, my Corrupted Shards for when the patch eventually comes out. Now for the traits, guys, I do have seven points into Ammo Reserve. I do have five points into Flash Caster. This is just so we can use Wormhole quicker. I have maxed out Fortify. I have put seven points into Strong Back. I've got two points into Triage. I feel like you could probably put two points into Swiftness. I'm not sure if I actually need Triage here. It's completely up to you. I've maxed out Vigor. I've put five points into Endurance. We've maxed out Expertise so we can get Wormhole and also Hunter Shroud back a little bit quicker. Maxed out Bark Skin, more damage reduction. Got five points in the handling. This is mainly just for the shotgun. If you don't want to use the shotgun handgun, take these five points out and 100% put them into uh, swiftness or if you have it regrowth. I got five points into footwork This is gonna be really good because you're mainly gonna be aiming in with the bow So it just gives us more movement speed and of course last but not least we're maxing out siphoner just to have more uh, Survivability and that is basically guys. Hopefully this build video did help you guys out This build is actually a, a lot of fun to use again If you're not someone that's really good at hitting their shots in high intensity situation this build isn't going to be very good for you to use. It is very cool seeing 11 and 12k crit pop up. There's not too many weapons in the game that are able to do that. And it's just, it's nice seeing big numbers pop up and enemies just get absolutely deleted. Now with the Elden Ring DLC announcement, I am absolutely addicted to Elden Ring again. So I'm, I might just do like a playthrough. I don't know. I'm just going to like maybe upload a playthrough, see how it goes. Um, I'm, I'm really addicted to the game again, like after that DLC announcement trailer, I've gone back just to familiarize myself with the game and I'm hooked. I'm friggin' hooked again! I'm hooked again. If you guys are into that, um, you can expect to see that over the next couple of weeks until Dragon Dogma 2 comes out or until we get the Remnant 2 patch, um, which is supposed to be coming out soon and with more details about their DLC. In the future appreciate all the love and support as always guys until next time stay safe peace out